Hi, everybody. My name is Nicole Slater. Welcome to the Artist Breakthrough Series. I'm here with Susan Maddox, and we are here today to talk about perfectionism and another myth of artists, and we'll get into that in a second. But first, I want to introduce our guest speaker, Susan, and tell us a little bit about what you do, Susan. Um, so I'm an artist and uh, I am a former textile designer and currently I live in Los Angeles and I have a studio in downtown LA and I support other artists as a mentor sharing all the things wow. that I've already been through <laughs> in my journey to becoming a full-time artist. And it's a lot of stuff, right? It's a, there is that whole artist journey and hero's journey, which we will definitely get into. And where can people find out information about what you do? Oh, I'm very active on Instagram. So you can find me at Susan Maddox Studio. And my website is the same, SusanMaddoxStudio.com. You can find out all about me. Awesome. <laughs> and for those who don't know who I am, my name is Nicole Slater. And I am a strategic marketing consultant. And I help artists get their message out there. So via email marketing, websites, social media, if you don't know what a hashtag is, and you, you want to share the role that my job is to teach you and help you get to that next level. You can find out more information about what I do at NicoleSlaterConsulting.com or um, on Instagram. I'm also very active at Nicole Slater Consulting. So the reason why we're here, Susan, and why you're the perfect fit for this is uh, two myths that we're going to talk about today, mm -hmm. perfectionism. And then the first one, doing everything yourself. I don't know if you're guilty of that at all, because I'm definitely guilty <laughs> of it. Um, but if you could tell us a little bit about this myth and like where, why does everyone think this? Why does everyone think that they have to do it all alone? I have a lot of ideas about this and it is definitely something that I still struggle with, honestly, you know, even though I, I <laughs> you know, it's like a process, right? Like you, you realize it and you keep addressing it. And, uh, you know, one thing is that, you know, as an artist, as a creative entrepreneur, you think you should be able to do it all yourself. And I think people really fall into this trap, especially when they're starting out, you can, feel a real sense of scarcity, you know, like you're trying something new, you're going into sort of unknown territory, maybe there's not a lot of cash flow, and you just think like, I can't pay someone else to help me. I can't get I just have to do it myself. And so it's this like really contractive like state, which feels very real. And, you know, when things don't work out, then we turn that and say, well, it's because the work wasn't good enough, or there's something wrong with me, like I just didn't get it. And so <laughs> I'd love to hear what you think about that. Yeah, definitely. I, I get in, I'm a solopreneur. I don't have, you know, besides an accountant that I send my, my taxes to once a year, I don't have anyone working underneath me. And for me, it's like, well, I have to, I have to keep costs down. It's the scarcity mindset. And it, it does kind of put you in this Catch 22, where I know for a lot of artists, and I'm working with an artist right now, I just picked up another client who's saying, well, I can't, you know, I need an assistant so I can sell more work, you know, so the, the assistant can ship it and send it out. But also because I'm not selling more work, I can't afford the assistant, right? And there's, there's all different ways that you can get around this, you know, maybe that person works in a, a co-op. I'm like, maybe you can just rent someone else's assistant or pay them a couple of bucks, you know, for two hours a week just to help you out and get started. You know, there's mm -hmm. all ways that you can just start accepting help and asking for help um, in really, really small ways. I think another thing that people do is they take on far too much and they're also unrealistic with how much they can actually do. So for instance, um, for me, like, I've definitely heard from clients, well, starting on Monday, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get assistant. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, another common one since January is coming up is I'm going to get on a diet. I'm going to work out five days a week. I'm going to not, I'm going to rip out, you know, carbs and sugar and all this other stuff. And it's just, you know, our brains think that we're a lot more capable <laughs> and they don't take into account of the actual real world stressors that come into play. So I think it's really common for people to take on too much and then as a result, you know, burn out. Mm -hmm, for sure. And I think that can really lead to people actually just quitting before they even really get started, you know, just out of the gate. And 
One thing that I think that I've discovered about working with people is that like when you first start, you don't even really know what's possible. Like you really don't even know what you don't know. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so working with people who are specialists in different areas of business is actually a huge shortcut because then you don't have to actually figure it out yourself through trial and error, which if you think about it, just can take so much time. Like this whole idea that you can do it yourself is is like a reaction. But once you start to pick it apart, you realize like that doesn't really make any sense, you know? And another, I think, really interesting thing that I've learned this year as I've started working with more and more consultants on different little aspects of my business is that instead of learning that new app, you know, to make reels, like you are actually developing more like leadership qualities where you have so you are like sort of holding the vision and then delegating and getting organized for that. So you are actually applying your energy in a way that is much more like leadership based. Um, I always think of Marie Kondo of like, you know, picking up that does this give me joy? Does writing your own social media copy <laughs> give you joy? Probably not. You know, like a lot of people are like, oh, I hate going on there. Well, mm -hmm. then, you know, get organized and maybe, you know, get somebody that can help you. Mm -hmm. A lot of people complain that, you know, oh, I can't afford that. There's definitely people in the Philippines that you can honestly pay $8 an hour to do this. Sure. And that's a good, fair wage for them. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a win win situation. Mm hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, getting a VA or like having someone do like a part of your social media for you, maybe do the writing or even having someone who you can turn to who will, you know, I don't know, adjust your photos and then upload them to your website. Just kind of taking that off your plate. These are small things that really don't cost that much. Honestly, you can get someone to do it for a few hours a week and all of a sudden, you know, you're a little bit more of your time and energy is freed up to do the thing that's really important. And, and that's one thing that I really think about is, is like, what is absolutely essential for me to do? What is the thing that only I can do? You know, and if you're an artist, you know, a lot of that is making art. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just thinking that as you were saying, it's like, okay, what are the most important, important things, making art, creating art, thinking about it, going and getting inspired where, however that works for you. And then also mm -hmm. networking, you know, there's really something to be said about the art industry and, oh. you know, shaking hands and kissing babies, your assistant can't go and network for you. Mm -hmm. So making time for, to going to those galleries, making an impression, building relationships, that's something that you as an artist can only do. But you did mention uh, briefly for an assistant, um, you know, maybe taking photos or categorizing your inventory. Um, Absolutely, yeah, that's actually an easy one to pass off. You just kind of set up a system and then you can, you know, ease the, know what to do. And then you don't even really have to think about it that much. They just kind of take this chunk, you know, and, it's actually, yeah, it's not, it's really not that prohibitive to get someone to do that a few hours a week for you. Yeah, it doesn't, happening. it doesn't take that much time. And then mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of programs out there. One that I use and, and work with is Art Cloud. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely uh, put a promo link down below if you're interested for 40% off. Um, you know, there's Artist Archive. There's a bunch of them out there and they're really affordable. But for artists who have been doing art for 30 years, they have 30 years worth of you know, drawings and paintings. And especially if they have multiple galleries, they're not sure where they are. Getting organized, I think, can really free up some of that energy. Absolutely. Yeah, the last thing you want to be doing is like hunting around, you know, in like years worth of stuff, trying to find what you need to, <laughs> to move forward, you know. And the, the other thing about getting about sort of like really prioritizing um, that getting help and getting organized is, you know, like kind of what we're talking about, like, then you create opportunities for more income, you know, then people can actually find your work and they can actually buy it, you know, and, and so it, it kind of like really makes that something that has to happen, you know, and sometimes those things get deprioritized when you're the one making the work and doing everything. And Absolutely. So, so, so to answer the question, can you do it all uh, all by yourself? Is it, can you? I don't think so. No. <laughs> I mean, you might. Yeah. No. I don't. I just don't think that there's enough energy for it. You know, like I just don't know that your chances of success are as good if you don't 
sort of like utilize other people's expertise, if nothing else, uh, you know, an hour long consultation on how to use social media. You know, I've done that, you know, have someone look at your website, tell you what's working, what's not working. Like those things for an hour or two can be huge. They can have huge value and like really impact how everything is kind of working. So something to consider. Absolutely. Uh, a couple other ideas, you know, there's especially in Los Angeles and the, the bigger you know, most major cities, they have colleges with art programs, they have internships, especially if you're an artist who's been doing it for a while, you know, maybe you can contact the college and say, hey, I'm looking for an assistant or to set up some kind of internship. Mm -hmm. You have knowledge um, that these interns and these people, you know, uh, these recent college graduates could really help with. So you are actually providing a service by letting them understand and learn what it really takes to be a full-time artist. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, to wrap up that myth number one, I'm going to do it all, all alone. I, I don't think that's a strategy for success. And the sooner you can kind of get over that hurdle, um, and maybe you're not ready to hire anyone and that's okay, but just start talking to other artists and seeing what their system is, what they do, um, to kind of find a system that works for you for organization. Definitely. Yes. So myth number two, uh, is perfectionism, which I know, uh, you know a lot about, and you've done a lot of research and study about, and I, I find this with my clients a lot. So if you could maybe tell us a little bit as a creative mentor, how perfectionism kind of comes up for your clients. Absolutely. And I think perfectionism is something that you find in creative people a lot, like to some degree or another. And I think what's really interesting about perfectionism is that until fairly recently, it was thought to be something you were born with and then you were just stuck with. It was just a part of you. And uh, more recent research has shown that um, the thinking about that has really changed. In fact, it's a mindset, which means that through like intentional um, working with it and, and like really changing the way you think, you can actually change that. So that's great news. <laughs> Not stuck in that, um, which I think is really wonderful. And because it's like, oh God, it's so debilitating for an artist. It's like a spiral that you can get stuck in and, and never move forward from, you know? Um, symptoms, you know, including like being highly critical of yourself and everything you do and also of other people, just always unsatisfied, doubting yourself and second guessing like self-sabotage in that way is really huge too. Um, and it really prevents you from getting your work out there. I know for, for my clients, when we're talking about social media or sending that newsletter, well, I don't have any shows, you know, a gallery hasn't shown me in a while. I'm not going to send out a newsletter, you know, well, you know, what are you doing? Give a behind the scenes view of your studio. There's a lot of things you can still communicate. Another, I think really big thing that perfectionism shows up as is a procrastination, like not being able to finish things, not being able to move forward. Um, there's sort of like all or nothing attitude where, you know, even if you have a great success, there's still a part of you that says like, eh, could have been better. <laughs> And, and those are those are things that can just be so debilitating, you know, as for a, a creative person, you know, because, you know, we are generally just putting things out in the world a lot, you know, at, anyway, ideally. <laughs> and so yeah. this, it can get triggered like constantly and it can always be just torture for people and really keep them really uh, not able to move forward. Um, Absolutely. And when I think of art, I think of it as like the ultimate act of vulnerability, whether that's music, whether that's painting, this is an internal thought that I had that I expressed mm -hmm. and ultimately shared with a bunch of people. That's really scary, right? So it's like you Absolutely. always are trying to, that perfectionism, you're trying to manage other people's expectations. Like, mm -hmm. well, they're going to hate this or they're going to not like this, this, you know, ethereal group out there, but rather reframing it of this is a service. This is giving other people permission to be vulnerable. This is giving other people permission to see art and to do art. And I know a lot of people, just like regular people, when they see art, 
they're like, oh my God, like I could never do that. You know, like it, it, it inspires them. Well, maybe, maybe I could go, you know, color at home or paint or sing in the shower or something. You're, it's a service you're giving to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually, you know, it's a way of thinking that we develop when we're young that we think will protect us from ever having to be vulnerable, right? And and so, you know, that we will never have to face that judgment or shame or be embarrassed, you know, and you're absolutely right that, you know, art really is the ultimate act of vulnerability. And, and so that, it's a perfect storm, <laughs> you yeah. know, and so, yeah. Um, so how do you move on from perfectionism with, I know you're a creative mentor and you work with mm -hmm. clients and uh, kind of breaking through. And this is why the reason for the artist breakthrough series, right. Is to get to the next level. And absolutely. perfectionism is a major roadblock for a lot of clients. So how do you mm -hmm. work on perfectionism? Well, you know, it's really great to support people to have more self compassion. And that's something which, um, you know, to have someone reinforce that for you, even though it does have to come from inside, can be really, really valuable. Um, you know, when you acknowledge that, you know, you're human and sometimes you will have success and other times less and probably somewhere in between, you know, and and like the thing that I love the most thinking about is that every little step you take, it doesn't have to be that grand idea that you wanted so badly, you know, your name up in lights. Like it can be a little thing. It can be sending out that email. It can be that social media post, but it's taking you a little bit closer to where you want to be. And also you're learning something in every single step that you take. And so that is a really big shift in the way of thinking about it, right? And and that's that's something what it's really nice to have some support when you're making that shift because it's big, right? And it needs to be reinforced constantly. <laughs> I find it very valuable, you know, to have that like reflected. Um, I think uh, another thing that you can do, and this is just good advice for for any problem, is just slow down. Mm. and get more into your body and get just like taking a couple of deep breaths or if you meditate, you know, when you're kind of in that analysis paralysis or, oh my God, what are people going to think about me and that monkey mind and all that craziness, taking a deep breath. And like you said, just remembering, connecting with yourself. I'm human. It's okay. You know, <laughs> and being gentle with yourself. Another thing is to like, really listen into what are these voices in your head? You're not crazy, you know, to have different voices. And what is the tone of the voices in your head? Is it judgmental? Is it supportive? You know, and, and who's kind of talking, you know, like just because you have a thought does not mean it's you. Mm -hmm. So for me, I've kind of like nicknamed them, you know, and, and one of my favorite ones that always comes out at 2 a.m., is the taskmaster to remind me of every single thing I did not do today and how I'm a total failure. And it's always at like 2 a.m. when I'm like wide awake with insomnia, you know, and I can't go to bed. I'm like, where were you at 2 p.m.? Like to help me get the, that person, that taskmaster never comes out at a useful time. So just kind of learning to like, okay, who's talking? You know, and like to re, like you said, reiterate a more gentle tone, a more gentle voice, which is is really hard to do. You know, to get into practice of that. It can be, yeah. It is a huge shift, you know, and it's also really helpful to realize that everywhere is everyone is somewhere in this process. You know, no one has this actually figured out. <laughs> We're all like, just making it up. It <laughs> is. <laughs> exactly, it's something we all deal with like over and over again, and. Um, you know, actually does require like daily, you know, attention and mindfulness to it. It's very powerful. Yeah. I think another tool, oh, we got a little uh, viewpoint of my dog making a, a little uh, say hello everyone to Tom. Um, he, he's always here to, to cheer me up. Another tool is I, I know a lot of people do to do lists, but um, I really like creating a list at the end of the day of everything you've actually done and accomplished. And sometimes those things are really small, but really hard, you know, especially if you're dealing with anxiety or depression, like, hey, I took a shower today. I fed myself today. I had a balanced meal. I got up. I got into the studio. I created today. I painted, you know, mm -hmm. I called my mom, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever it is. 
just listings, a lot of times we only focus on the things we haven't done and we don't stop to celebrate the things we actually have done. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that actually reminds me. That's what I was thinking today is like actually celebrating every little tiny win is a really huge way to combat the sort of inertia of perfectionism. And that's one that, that I still struggle with, you know, like you, you, make a small sale you do you do you know you do whatever it is like yeah, to everyone's action. gonna start somewhere you know yes exactly the small actionable steps mm -hmm. that's and that's that thing it's that stepping stones the little steps towards where you want to be and like making sure that those things you know that you really sort of integrate that this is happening you know and this is moving me towards where i want to be it's not just happening sort of randomly, you know, and I think that's incredibly powerful. It feels great when you kind of get your head around that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think kind of in closing for those watching out there, thank you so much for joining us. We'd love to continue this conversation more. And Susan, I'd love to have you on again if you're if you're interested in participating. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Um, I, I, I think you're so talented as an artist i just i love what you do i haven't seen it for everyone out there like go check out her instagram at susan mm -hmm. studio because it's just really fascinating the textile art that she does but also as a creative mentor we really need more of you we need more people like you that can just help people mm -hmm. get to the next level so in closing do you want to just remind people a little bit of how they can get in contact with you and how you help artists out Sure. Yeah. So yes, you can find me on Instagram at Susan Maddox Studio or at SusanMaddoxStudio.com. And um, I've been an artist for over 30 years and I've tried so many different ways of having a creative practice in my life. And it's, it's filled many different roles for me. And I've been a full-time artist for a while now. And part of like what I really focus on as a mentor, which has been so powerful for me, is that mindset shift. And so as a mentor, supporting people in making that mindset shift, and then from that point, figuring out where they really want to go and taking those steps to get there. So that's how I like to support people as a mentor, through what I've learned, <laughs> through, yeah. all this, through all the trial and error of everything that I've tried. I love it. I love it. You've been there. You've walked the walk. You've talked the talk. It's mm -hmm. it's great. Um, just to remind people what I do, again, Nicole Slater, and you can find out more information at NicoleSlaterConsulting.com. And if you're interested in upping your digital skills, learning more about how to edit your own website or post to social media, um, or really um, I'm taking on a lot of clients more on the strategy side, of how do I get that gallery? How do I make that you know networking connection and finding those gatekeepers to really break through to the next level in your artist career? Again, you can find out more information at NicoleSlaterConsulting.com or just send me a DM direct message uh, for those who don't know on Instagram at Nicole Slater Consulting. So Susan, thank you so much for, for joining me and for everyone else, we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you, Nicole. Bye. Bye.